In the last section, we spoke about what a volume is compared to a persistent volume. We're now going to pivot a little bit and talk about how a persistent volume claim compares to a persistent volume. Now, these two topics right here and their relation with each other is kind of hard to understand at first glance. So I'm going to give you a very quick analogy or a very quick story to help you understand what the difference is between a volume claim and a persistent volume. After I give you the analogy, we'll then kind of take this little short story and pivot it over to the world of Kubernetes and apply some real terminology to it. So in this section, let's get to it. We're going to look at a very quick little short story to help you understand the difference between a persistent volume and a persistent volume claim. So here's my short story. I want you to imagine that you are walking down a sidewalk and you are in the process of building out some custom computer. You are building a computer from scratch. And so maybe at this point in time, you have a case and a motherboard and a processor, some RAM and a graphics card. And the last thing that you need might be some type of hard drive. So you're walking along with your custom PC and you see a big billboard that says, come on down to the computer store. We have two really great hard drives that are available. We have a 500 gigabyte option and a one terabyte option. So you look at this billboard right here and you say, you know what, between these two options, I think that 500 gigabyte hard drive would be perfect for my custom computer. So you take your custom computer, you continue walking down the sidewalk until you get to the computer store. Now at the computer store, you talk to a salesperson and you say, hey, you know, I just saw that billboard where you were advertising the 500 gigabyte option. I would love to have one of those hard drives. So the salesperson says, not a problem. And they turn around and they go to some storeroom or some like inventory store inside the computer store. And they look through all the different pieces of hardware that they have available. Now you had asked for a 500 gigabyte hard drive. So the salesperson says, great, this is perfect. I can meet your request right now. I've got a 500 gigabyte hard drive ready to go. And so they throw that thing over to you and you now have a 500 gigabyte hard drive that you can put into your computer. All right, so that's the entire short story. That's kind of scenario one. Now I wanna very quickly go through the same scenario again, but we're going to imagine that rather than asking for a 500 gigabyte hard drive, maybe this time around you ask for a one terabyte hard drive instead. So we're gonna do a second flow through this diagram. And imagine that you instead decide you want the one terabyte drive. So in this case, you are again walking down the sidewalk, you see the billboard, and you see that there is a one terabyte hard drive storage option. You say, oh, that's perfect. I would love to have a one terabyte hard drive. So you walk down to the computer store a second time, and you say to the salesperson, hey, you know, I would love to get one of those one terabyte hard drives. And the salesperson says, okay, sure. Let me just check the storeroom really quick. So the salesperson goes back to the storeroom and they look at all the hard drives that they already have in stock. So these hard drives right here inside the storeroom are essentially hard drives that have already been created. They are in existence already. The salesperson looks through all the stock that they have and they very quickly realize, oh no, there is no one terabyte hard drive on stock on hand ready to be sold. But the salesperson is not going to give up very easily. The salesperson says, you know what, I'm going to make sure you get what you asked for because we were advertising that as an option. So the salesperson picks up the phone and very quickly makes a call out to the hard drive factory. They call the factory and they say, hey, look, I got someone right here. They want a one terabyte hard drive. I need you to create this thing right now and ship it on over. And so the factory puts that hard drive together, lickety split just as fast as you blink, and they ship it on over to the computer store. And so now the salesperson has your one terabyte hard drive that was fabricated on the fly just for you. And they hand the hard drive over and you are now a happy little camper because you have the one terabyte hard drive that you were asking for. All right, so that's the entire story, two run, th run throughs. Now there's a couple of very quick important points that I want to highlight here. The first important point is that we had a billboard that was essentially advertising storage options that were available. The second important thing is that for those two storage options, some of them were ready to go and pre-assembled. So there were some instances of 500 gigabyte hard drives that had already been created and were ready to be handed off to you, the customer. 
There were also some storage options that had been advertised on that billboard that were not ready to go and had to be essentially fabricated or created on the fly to meet your demand. So whether it was a hard drive option that was ready to go or one that had to be fabricated on the fly, no big difference to you, the customer. Either way, you got what you were asking for. All right, so that's the two big points I want you to understand. So we're now going to look at another copy of this diagram that has some Kubernetes terminology applied to it. Okay, so here's the Kubernetes version of this diagram. So first off, you in the previous diagram were putting together a computer and you had realized that you needed a hard drive. That's very similar to you and I as developers putting together a pod configuration. When you and I put together a pod that we know is going to need a persistent volume, we have to look at a billboard of sorts that's going to advertise a couple of different storage options. So these different storage options that are being advertised are what we refer to as persistent volume claims. So a persistent volume claim is an advertisement. It is not an actual volume. It can't store anything. It's just an advertisement that says, here are the different options that you have access to for storage inside of this particular cluster. You and I, as developers, are going to write out inside of some config files the different persistent volume claims that are going to be available inside of our cluster. So you and I are going to write a config file that says there should be a 500 gigabyte hard drive option available to all the different pods inside of our cluster. And we might also write out a config file that says there is a one terabyte option that is available as well. So again, a persistent volume claim is like an advertisement. It's saying, here is something that you can purchase. Here is something you can get for your pod when it is created. Now, when you chose one of those persistent volumes, you went off to Kubernetes with your pod config and you said to Kubernetes, which was the salesperson in reality, hey, I just saw that 500 gigabyte hard drive option. And you said to Kubernetes, hey, I want that 500 gigabyte option. Give me one of those. And so Kubernetes had to go back into some imaginary store and it had to look through some number of options of persistent volumes or storage options, instances of storage options that were readily available. And so inside of a Kubernetes cluster, we might have some number of persistent volumes that have been created ahead of time. These are actual instances of hard drives essentially that can be used right away for storage. Any persistent volume that is created ahead of time inside of your cluster is something that we refer to as statically provisioned. So a statically provisioned persistent volume is something that we have very specifically created ahead of time. On the other hand, we also had a, another option that could have been created on the fly. So this is what we refer to as a dynamically prov provisioned persistent volume. It is another storage option that is not created ahead of time. It's only created when you, putting together your pod, ask for it. So you can totally ask for this one terabyte hard drive. You know, you can say to Kubernetes, give me that one terabyte option, but that one terabyte hard drive was not going to be created until you went ahead and asked for it. So that's the difference between a dynamically provisioned and a statically provisioned persistent volume. Is it created ahead of time or is it created just when you immediately ask for it? All right, so that's it. That's the big difference between a persistent volume and a persistent volume claim. The persistent volume claim is an advertisement of options. You can ask for one of those options inside of your pod config. And when you do, Kubernetes is going to look at its existing stores of persistent volume. And it's either going to give you a volume that's been created ahead of time, or it's going to attempt to create one on the fly. So there's the entire example. Let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back to the next section, we're going to start to update our config files to create a new persistent volume claim that's going to create a storage option that can be claimed essentially by our Postgres pod that we had already created. So quick break and I'll see you in just a minute.